with over 200 exciting new features, all on top of a rock-solid Unix base, Mac OS X is the most revolutionary, innovative, and secure operating system ever. I'm going to walk you through a number of these key features, including Spotlight, Dashboard, and major new versions of iChat, Safari, QuickTime, Mail, and many more. I'm also going to show you a lot of the cool tips to really make Tiger fly. And by the end of the seminar, you'll agree that Tiger is the most revolutionary operating system ever, and it's literally going to change the way you use your Mac. The most exciting feature in Tiger is Spotlight. Spotlight is a desktop search engine that instantly lets you find anything on your system. Spotlight can search your email, your contacts, your calendar appointments, images, files, PDFs, applications, everything. All you need to do is type a couple keys and Spotlight will find it. Spotlight is available no matter what you're doing on your Mac. It's always in the top right of the menu bar and to search for something just click on the Spotlight icon or from the keyboard just hit command space and start typing. This is going to change the way you use your Mac forever. Most users will never have to go to the Finder again. Literally everything and anything can be found using Spotlight. I just got back from a trip to Yosemite, and so if I want to find everything about that trip, I just type it into Spotlight. The results pour down instantly. You can open up any item automatically just by mousing down. Here's an email. You can go back to Spotlight. Notice we organize this based on email messages, contacts, images, folders, calendar appointments, Microsoft Word or Office documents. It's even found some PDFs. Let me open up this PDF and here's what's going on. Spotlight was able to find this PDF because it knows about every piece of text within this map. Now there's some cool tricks in Spotlight as well. If I wanted to just find all of the images, I can just type Yosemite kind image and there, it's just the images. Or if I just wanted to find the PDFs, I can say PDFs. Now, I'm planning a trip to Europe soon, so if I search on Paris, wow, Spotlight found 93 items, again organized by documents and email messages. But you notice Show All. Well, if I click Show All, it takes me to the Spotlight results window. And the Spotlight window will show me everything on my system, not just the top 20 hits. And so I can take a look at the documents and the email messages, but check this out, I can expand any of these items. So if I wanted to book dinner reservations, I can expand this item, click the phone number, it'll give me a magnified view of that phone number, so if I have to make a phone call from the other end of the room, I can still see it. If I wanted to send an email, I can click on an email address, it'll launch the mail program so I can type up my email, and in this case I want to book a reservation at the restaurant. For images, a spotlight will give you a lot of detailed information, including the resolution and what camera was used to take the, the pictures. A lot of the metadata that goes along with images and other media files. Uh, you can view images by thumbnail and check this out. If you just uh, select a bunch of images, we've integrated a slideshow directly into Spotlight as well. Press the slideshow button and you get this beautiful on-screen slideshow. You can jump to an index page, jump to any single image you want, and you can add images to iPhoto with a single click. Spotlight lets you organize these results in a number of powerful ways. You can group by the kind of information as we're seeing here, or you can organize it by date. You might want to see all the files and all the information on your system chronologically. You also might want to see everything from the different people you work with and communicate with. Of course, you can customize Spotlight because Spotlight has its own system preference. In the system preference, you can see all of the different types of information that Spotlight can find. And you can change the order in which Spotlight will return its results. For example, if you're always looking for images, we'll just drag the images item to the top. Now, as image results come in, they'll be at the top of the list. For power users and professionals, the Finder is a particularly useful application for finding and organizing documents. We've enhanced the Finder in Tiger using Spotlight, making it even more powerful than before. Let's say I'm a designer working on a travel brochure for a client. I want to find everything on my system dealing with uh, beaches. So I just type in the word beach, and that fast, the finder now is showing me everything on my system related to beaches. Again, it organizes it in this great spotlight view. Now, I might want to save this search. 
And so we have this save button. I just press it, and we'll call this Beach Project, and save that. That's going to add it directly to my sidebar. So no matter what I'm doing on my system, at any time, I can just click on that smart folder, and it shows me everything related to Beach. I can make this even more powerful, though. Let me click the Edit button and show you how I can refine the search to drill down to exactly what I'm looking for. Because this is a project involving printing, I just want to find my images. So now it's filtered down that view to just showing me images on the system. But I'm going to refine this and bring up all of the different metadata attributes that Spotlight is able to understand. And there's a ton of them. So let me just type in color here because I'm looking for just those images that are encoded with the CMYK color space. So as soon as I choose this, Spotlight updates that view to just show me the CMYK images. It's now filtered out all of the RGBs. Now, these smart folders are always up to date because Spotlight is completely integrated into the system. So if I were to go into Adobe Photoshop, and let me open up another image that I'm working on. Okay, this is a great shot. I want to be able to include this in my travel brochure. But it's currently encoded as RGB. Now watch this. I'm going to change this from RGB into CMYK. And as soon as I save this, my smart folder updated by the time I could get back to it. It's that fast. So now I have a folder that is always showing me everything on my system that matches this criteria. In this case, it's everything related to the beach that's an image in the CMYK color space. Spotlight even makes using system preferences easier. Let's say I wanted to find a password setting. All I type is the word pass. And Spotlight is highlighting every system preference that has anything to do with password. I can cycle through the different ones I want. If I want to change my login password, it's taking me directly to the account system preference. Spotlight even knows terms that are more familiar with Windows users. So for example, if you're used to setting your desktop picture using wallpaper, type wallpaper, and Spotlight found the desktop and screensaver preference that quickly. So as you can see, Spotlight can find anything. It can search email messages, your contacts, your calendar appointments. It can even search within PDFs to find exactly what you're looking for. It can find Microsoft Office documents, and it can use metadata to find images and other media formats. Without having to navigate to find your files, you can let Spotlight find it for you, and it's going to change the way you use your Mac forever. A feature you're really going to love in Tiger is Dashboard. Dashboard introduces a whole new world of graphically rich, lightweight applications that we call widgets. Here's what a widget can do for you. So I'm working on a couple different projects here, and if I need to do a, a quick little calculation, instead of looking to find my calculator app, I can just choose Dashboard in the dock, and the widgets appear. I can do my quick little calculation. When I'm done, I just click back, the widgets disappear, and I get back to exactly what I was doing. Tiger includes 14 widgets, so let's check them out. This plus icon in the bottom left of the screen exposes the widget bar and shows you all 14 widgets, like phone book, stocks, translation, and weather. Now I'm planning this trip to Europe, and a number of these widgets can help me out. So let me drag out my address book and check out that cool ripple effect as the widget comes on my dashboard. So this will allow me to find all my contacts in Paris. I can also pull up a dictionary. This taps into the renowned Oxford reference material, so you can do dictionary and thesaurus lookups. There's a flight tracker. The flight tracker will show me up-to-date information about my flight that I'm planning. Type in my airline, my departure city, and it will find and locate all of the flights that are scheduled. There's also a phone book. So if I want to find travel agents nearby, I can just type in travel. We'll do a search across the internet, because Spotlight is able to access information not only on your system, but across the web. I can also click on the address, so it will take me directly to the web and show me a map. Let's go back to Dashboard and bring back the widget bar. You can have a stock quote widget for tracking your portfolio, a tile game to entertain, and there's this translation widget. I drag it out, and you can see that the translator can translate between many different languages. This is going to be perfect for my trip to Paris. 
I can type French fries and it converts it for me on the fly to pommes frites. I can also use this in reverse. So this translator widget is going to be a fantastic help when I'm in France. We also have a unit converter. Drag out the unit converter, and this is an amazing widget. It's able to convert between many different units of measure from area, energy, temperature, time, and length. Length will be perfect because I'm used to measuring in miles. So if I have to travel 100 kilometers, well, that's about 62 miles. And the unit converter can also convert currencies. This widget will actually go out to the web using a web service to look up the latest currency exchange rate. So, for example, here's the conversion today for $500. Now, this weather widget is great fun. This one shows the weather in Cupertino right now, but what's really cool is I can have more than one of each widget open on my dashboard. I can track the weather in Paris. I just click that I button. I can type in Paris, France, press the Done button, and now it goes across the Internet and shows me the current weather. If I click on the widget, it's going to show me a six-day forecast. And check out the graphic quality of this widget. It's stunning. Let me show you all the different weather conditions that we include, like rain, showers, thunderstorms, light or heavy snow, ice, and even hail. And it even shows the correct phase of the moon. And the world clock is another super convenient, super cool widget. Configure that by flipping it around. So instead of looking at North America, let's switch to Europe. Go into the city pop-up, go down to Paris, it's nighttime in Paris, so it's showing us the dark clock face. And so now my dashboard, at a glance, is showing me everything I need to know for my trip. And to get back to my work, it's just as simple as clicking a key or clicking anywhere on the desktop. In fact, you can customize dashboard any way you want. Going back to system preferences, we see there's a dashboard and expose system prep. You can set any function key to activate dashboard. You can even set a screen corner to activate the dashboard automatically. So now, just by moving my mouse to the bottom left of my screen, my widgets appear instantly. And because you can have multiple copies of a widget open at the same time, for example, to track the weather and time at different locations, 14 widgets turns into an endless number of possibilities, all personalized for you. Widgets are a whole new class of application for the Mac. They come and go with ease, they're beautiful to look at, and they give you access to information in a flash. There's a brand new version of Mail in Tiger with a great new look and some amazing new features that make it the best version of Mail ever. Let's jump right in and take a look. The first thing you'll notice is there's a brand new user interface. It's simple, it's elegant, with a much more convenient layout. Now you always see your mailboxes and Mail is even easier to use. So like other applications in Mac OS X, Mail sports a search field that's powered by Spotlight. I can search through all of my mail instantly just by typing. It's lightning fast. Just like iTunes, it performs an instantaneous search as you type. It's a whole new way to get your mail. You don't have to sort your mail anymore. You just search for it and it's there. So for my upcoming Paris trip, I just type Paris. And there it's found all of my messages across all my mailboxes, searching not only the subject, but the full contents of every message. But I still might want to set up a special mailbox to see things at a glance. Mail supports smart mailboxes. For instance, if I just want to find all my messages related to Little League, I'll just type that in. I just press the Save button, and it's already set to my previous search. So when I press OK, it's going to create a special mailbox for me, a smart mailbox that will show me just those messages. Anytime any new incoming mail arrives, if it has anything to do with Little League, it'll show up right there. I have another smart mailbox called New Mail, and that's going to show me all of my unread messages. So it's very easy for me, at a glance, to see what's new or what fits a particular topic. And you can create smart mailboxes that correspond to anything that Mail knows about. Who sent it, when it came, any criteria that matters for you. For instance, I might just want to see all of the messages from my boss sent to me that came in today because those are going to be the most important. And Mail has some amazing features for working with photos. For example, I have this photo that I'd like to send to a friend, so I'll compose a new message, and I'll just drag it in. This photo came directly from my digital camera, so it's rather big. It's 1.5 megabytes in size. And there's nothing more frustrating than sending a photo to someone and it never reaches them because it was too big. 
The image size pop-up menu lets me resize this image from its actual size to a large, medium, or small size. I'll pick small, and on the fly, Mail has resized this image all the way down to 218 kilobytes, small enough to be sent anywhere. And when you receive email messages that have picture attachments, look what Mail can do. So here's an email with eight different picture attachments. I can press this slideshow button, and directly from Mail, I get a full screen slideshow of all my images with this beautiful crossfade. Then when I move the mouse, I can pause the slideshow, I can advance from one frame to the next, I can even bring up an index sheet that will show me all of the images in that attachment and jump to any specific one. And for the images I love, I can add them to iPhoto easily with a single click. So with spotlight searching, smart mailboxes, and seamless integration with photos, an already great mail application just got better. Safari is the fastest and easiest to use browser on the Mac, and in Tiger it gets a whole bunch better. Safari 2 supports a new protocol called RSS. RSS stands for Really Simple Syndication, and it's a web standard being used by many websites to provide up-to-date information on newly posted stories and articles. So let's take a look at the new Safari. I'll open it up, and when I navigate to one of my favorite websites, it's actually hard to tell, looking at this page, exactly what stories are new. If I checked the site an hour ago, I may have a hard time knowing what stories have been posted. Now Safari has noticed something special about this website. It has automatically detected that there is an RSS feed for the site, and it's put this blue RSS icon in the address field. I click it, and now I'm viewing the RSS feed. It's showing me all of the stories, in this case sorted by date, giving me the title and a short summary. I can control my article length so I can see just the headlines or all the way up and show all the information. I can take a look at the articles yesterday, today, or all of them. You have complete control over how this information is presented. But RSS gets really interesting when you start combining multiple feeds together. So if I take a look at my news folder here, here I have a number of the leading news sites on the web. Now I could navigate to each one of these sites individually to keep up to date on the latest news. Or I could simply choose View All RSS Articles, and Safari is going to take me to a new view that shows me every single feed across all of these sources. I can scan through it very, very quickly and see exactly what's new up on the web. Notice also that there are numbers beside the bookmark names. That's the number of new articles that have been posted since my last visit. I have an entertainment folder that's made up of multiple sites as well. If I click that, it's going to show me all of the entertainment news. Now, I can take all of this information and filter it down to specific topics that I'm interested in. For example, I'm really into jazz, so I type in jazz, and now Safari is just showing me those articles that match that criteria. Here are new songs from the iTunes Music Store, news articles from NPR, BBC, and other sources. And I can do one more really cool thing here. I can bookmark this. So I'm going to press the plus icon in the Safari toolbar, and I'll just title this Jazz, add it directly to my bookmarks bar. And now, no matter what I'm doing on the web, if I want to see what's going on that's related to my interest, Jazz, I just click this icon, and I'll get an instant, up-to-date view of everything related to that particular topic. You can build your own personal news clipping service. It lets you explore and enjoy the web in a completely new way. Now, there's a lot of other great features in Safari. For example, if you've ever used another friend's or colleague's Mac and you're worried about leaving behind history or cookie information, let's say you're going through your, your bank statements and you didn't want to leave any confidential information behind, well, we're introducing a great new feature called private browsing. When you turn on private browsing, you can walk up to someone else's Mac, maybe a public access one, and browse away, access bank sites, type in usernames and passwords, not ever having to worry about leaving any of that information behind. You can walk way back to your own computer knowing your sensitive information has not been retained. Now Safari integrates with other applications in Mac OS X extremely well. For example, if I'm going on one of my favorite photo sites and I see a particular picture that I would love to add to my own iPhoto library, well all you need to do is hold down the control key, click on the picture, 
and you can choose Add Image to iPhoto Library. It will take that image and add it to iPhoto with a single click of the mouse. And what's more, Safari makes it really simple for you to email websites around. So if you have this particular site, you'd love to email it to a friend or a colleague, well, you can just go up to the file menu, choose Mail Contents of this page. Safari will open up Mail with a brand new composed message with the exact contents of that website. Mail uses HTML now, so you can send really rich emails to friends, family, and colleagues. So with all these new features, especially the integration of RSS, Safari is unquestionably the most innovative browser ever built. Tiger includes QuickTime 7, the latest version of Apple's award-winning media architecture and player. QuickTime 7 will redefine the digital media experience for movie watchers and movie makers alike. There's a number of great features. Let me show you. I'll open up a movie, and the new player supports live resizing. So as I move this movie, notice how the motion continues to play absolutely fluidly. And when I transition from normal size to half size and all the way up to full screen, we have these beautiful, stunning animations to make the experience super smooth. The biggest feature in QuickTime 7 is the new H.264 video codec. It's the next generation of MPEG-4. And with this stunning video technology, you get incredible, high-quality, high-definition video. It's so good, it's been adopted by both the Blu-ray Disc Association and the HD DVD Forum as the future for high-definition DVDs. Let's take a look at this codec in action. Here I have a trailer. This is encoded at full HD resolution. And just take a look at the incredible detail, the incredible motion that this codec provides. This is full cinema quality video on your Mac. Now you probably can't see just how beautiful this is because you're downloading it on the internet, but believe me, it's crystal clear and gorgeous. And if you have QuickTime 7 Pro, you can quickly and easily create video postcards using any FireWire camera. Or you can use your microphone to capture audio for slideshow or video narration. QuickTime 7 Pro also offers sophisticated controls for controlling audio, video, and color. There's even a jog shuttle that lets me jog reverse and forward, and I can even alter the playback speed all the way up to three times normal. QuickTime 7 also includes a complete set of controls for movie playback. When I'm in full screen mode, I just need to move the mouse, and there's this new on-screen control that lets you pause, jump to any portion of your track, or even exit full screen mode. As you can see, with the brand new QuickTime player, the H.264 video codec, and all these great new features, QuickTime remains the ultimate video platform. iChat is all new in Tiger as well. Building on the audio and video conferencing that we know today, the new iChat does multi-person. Multi-person audio conferencing with up to 10 people and multi-person video conferencing with up to four. The video quality is even better. In fact, the whole experience is stunning. You just have to see it to believe it. So let's take a look. I'm going to launch the new iChat in Tiger, and here's my buddy list. Danica, Kelvin, and Leah. And to start a conference, it's as simple as clicking on their names, going down to the audio conference icon, and I've just sent out invites to my audio conference. Hey, Danica. Hi, Kelvin. Hey, Ken. How's it going? Good. Hey, Leah. Hey, Ken. How's it going? It's going great. This is the great new user interface for an audio conference using the new iChat. And notice how each person has their own individual audio VU meters. Makes it really easy to see who's talking at any time. But of course, the really cool feature in iChat is multi-person video. So let me close off this audio conference. Great. Bye, Ken. See ya. Bye, Ken. And because I've connected my iSight camera to my Mac, I'm ready to go. It's that simple, and there's no extra setup at all. So let's start with Danica. I'll invite her to the conference just by clicking on her video icon, and this sends out an invitation to her. Oh, hi, Danica. Hey, Ken. Nice to see you. Good to see you, too. Now, this is the iChat that we know and love, a two-person video conference, but it's even better now. We're using the H.264 video codec, so the video quality is absolutely stunning. I can resize this window larger and smaller, and the quality remains absolutely perfect. 
To add a second person to our video conference, I just need to go to the plus sign here, click on it. It will show me all my buddies in my buddy list. And to invite Leah, I just choose her name from this list. And notice how the room grows uh, to welcome the second person to the conference. Hey, Leah. Hi, Ken. Hi, Danica. Hey, Leah. And so we've built a little virtual meeting room here. The room has this beautiful, shiny table surface. And notice how all of the reflections um, cast in the surface and keep up in real time. Now I can add Kelvin to the conference, making it a, a full four-way video conference just by choosing his name out of the list as well. And again, the room has adjusted and shifted to show us all four people. Oh, hey, Kevin. Hey, Ken. How's it going? It's going great. So we now have a four-person video conference going over the internet. The quality is incredible. And check it out in full screen. I'll just click on the full screen control. And there you have a full screen four-person video conference. This is going to be an amazing way to keep in touch. In fact, I'm going to Europe soon, and I can't wait to use the new iChat to keep in touch with friends, family members, and colleagues. Hey, Ken, by the way, I got that Paris Metro map you wanted me to get for you. Oh, great. Let me just send it to you through iChat. That would be perfect. So Leia's just dragged that PDF map to my name on her buddy list, and I get this incoming file window. I'll just click on it. I can see that it's a Paris Metro map .pdf, and when I press Save, that's taken the PDF directly from Leah's system to mine. I can double click on it. And this is a PDF of the Paris Metro map. Perfect. I'll never be lost again. And I have full control over this video conference as well. And so I can say goodbye to individual people. Hey, thanks a lot, Kelvin. It's been uh, great seeing you. Bye, Ken. Take care. I just moved the mouse over his window, press the X. We say goodbye to Kelvin. And notice how the room seamlessly adjusts now to a three-person conference. Thanks, Leah. That's been perfect. We'll see you when I get back. Sounds good. Bye. All right. And just click close. And now it's just back to the one-on-one -on -one video conference with me and Danica. Hey, Danica, I do have that travel info that I promised you. Why don't I send it to you? Oh, that's perfect. Thank you. I'll just find it in my finder and click on this document icon. And I'll just drag it up to Danica's name. Press send. There it is. That's great. Perfect. Well, thanks a lot, Danica. I can't wait to see you when I get back. Thanks, Ken. Have a good trip. Thanks. Take care. Now, here's another really cool feature in iChat. Check out Kelvin. I can tell he's listening to the song ePro from Beck because he's gone to his status menu and chosen to show his current iTunes track. So anybody that has Kelvin on their buddy list window will see what music he's listening to. But it gets even cooler. I can listen to that track myself by just clicking on the iTunes Music Store icon it's going to take me directly to the iTunes Music Store, directly to the track, so I can listen to my own 30-second preview by pressing the play button. And if I want to, I can just press buy song or buy the full album. It's that easy. How cool is that? With multi-person audio conferencing and stunning multi-person video conferencing, Tiger sets a new gold standard for communication on the Internet. I'd like to introduce you to a completely new application in Tiger called Automator. Automator does exactly what it sounds like it does. It helps you automate complex or repetitive tasks. And it's really easy. There's no programming needed whatsoever. Let's take a look. I'm going to open up Automator here. And this is my workflow. A workflow is just a series of actions that flow from one to the next. Automator shows you everything that's available for automation. Your applications, and all of the actions. You can automate the address book, you can automate the finder, you can automate iCal, mail, PDFs, and previews. So let's start with a simple automation, something that we do very, very frequently. On my desktop here, I have a folder of pictures. These pictures came from my digital camera, and as you can see, the file names from this camera are a little obscure. I'd like to rename all these. So instead of going from picture to picture to picture, renaming them, that would take quite a while. Let's see if Automator can help. I'm going to take all of these pictures and just drag it into my workflow. That's created an action that has references to every single one of these files. Now I want to rename them. I could glance through all of these actions looking for rename, but we have a search field. So let me search on rename. Well, it found rename finder items. And this action actually has a lot of power to it. 
I can add the date or time. I can add additional text to the existing name. But what I want to do is I want to make these file names all sequential. I'm going to start a completely new name, and we'll title it Provence. And we'll place a number after the name starting at 1. And that's it. That's my workflow. And watch what happens. I'll just hit the Run button here in the workflow window. And lo and behold, that quickly, every single file got renamed. So that's a great simple example. Automator can also do some really powerful things with PDF and other applications on the system. So let's check out a, a slightly more involved one. I have to send a lot of documents around via email to my colleagues every day. I need these documents to be small, and often I want them to be secure. So let me show you how Automator can help make this repetitive task simple. I'm going to start my workflow off by using the Compress Image PDF action because I want to make sure that my PDFs are as small as possible so they can be transported over email efficiently. So I'm going to compress this using JPEG compression, and I'll pick a medium factor. I'm very concerned about confidentiality, so I would love to be able to encrypt the PDF. So we'll drag out the encrypt PDF action. And here it's asking me to supply a password. I'm going to reuse this workflow time and time again. So I'll expand the option so that Automator will prompt me when this action is run to ask me what password I want to use for that specific document. Now I'd love to be able to save some time by sending this automatically using mail. If I go to the mail category, there's a new mail message action. So I can drag that in. Now here's something really cool. I can save it as a plugin. A plugin will make this workflow available directly in another application. It'll be available in the Finder, or you can associate it with a folder action. You could tie it into the image capture application. But I'd love to tie this directly into the print system. And so I'm going to choose Print Workflow. And I'll call this Compress, Encrypt, and Mail. And I save that off. And now when I'm in any application in any document in Mac OS X, this workflow is going to be one of my options. So let's go into Keynote. But I go up to the File menu now, choose Print, and directly in our PDF command are all of our standard options. But now, Compress, Encrypt, and Mail, that workflow we just created appears. And now when I choose this, Keynote's going to print this presentation into a PDF form. It compressed that PDF, and now it's prompting me for what password to use. So I'll type in my password, hit Continue, and the workflow completed by composing a brand new email message. It's attached that PDF, ready for me to send. That just saved me a ton of time, and I can use it every time I want to be able to send a confidential document from any Mac OS X application. With over 150 actions, Automator is going to be able to help you save an incredible amount of time and be more productive on your Mac. With over 200 new features, Tiger is the most exciting release ever. There's something for everyone, no matter how you use your Mac. Let me show you a couple of my favorites. First, Tiger includes a full dictionary and thesaurus. It comes from Oxford. It's the new American English dictionary, and it's available as a standalone application. It's available as a widget. But even better, you can bring up the dictionary anytime you want to look up a word. Here's how it works. Select the word. Hold down the control key, select Look Up Dictionary, and there you have it. You can even toggle between the dictionary and the thesaurus. In fact, we have an even more convenient control key shortcut. Just hold down the Command, Control, and D key, and as you browse around words, Tiger will bring up definitions on the fly as you mouse over each and every word. And that hotkey can be configured really easily in the keyboard system preference. That's the built-in dictionary, so you'll never be at a loss for words again. Now, if you want to make sure your kids are always protected when they use the internet, we've built parental controls right into the system. So I'll go to the account preferences, and for Billy's account, I can go to the parental controls tab, and I can configure mail to work in the safest way possible. Hit configure, and I can specify the list of exactly who Billy's allowed to receive emails from. And if he receives any emails outside that list, I'll actually receive a permission email where I can approve whether or not Billy should see that person or not. This is going to be a very useful tool. And if you use multiple Macs, be sure to sign up with .Mac because in Tiger, .Mac will keep in sync all of your contacts, 
web bookmarks, calendar appointments, email settings and rules across every computer that you use. So if I add a new contact or web bookmark at work, my Mac at home will be updated automatically. And be sure to check out the collection of beautiful new desktop pictures, including nature, plants, and black and white. And we have some stunning new screensavers, like iTunes artwork, nature patterns, paper shadow, and the coolest one, the RSS visualizer that uses OpenGL 3D technology. To view any article that you're interested in, just press a key and you'll be taken directly to the website where you can view the whole thing. So no matter how you use your Mac, whether it's at home, in school, in the studio, or in the office, you'll agree that Tiger is the most innovative, revolutionary new operating system ever, and it will literally change the way you use your Mac.